All right, welcome back. We're on to stripping this motor down. So what I've done now is I've removed the um, starter motor and I've put the uh, extra brace in there. So when I flip it over, it's not going to be too much strain just on that top mount on this engine case. I've gone ahead and moved these out. Water outlets for the head. There's two at the back here, one at the front. They are a bit tricky to get out. Uh, just be patient, it's very easy to cross the tube. On the front one, I'll actually use a socket. So I'll jam a socket in there and use that as leverage and just go back and forward, back and forward, and eventually it comes out. That took about five, ten minutes to get that one out. So <clears throat> what I've done here, gone ahead and measured the valve clearances before I stripped the engine down. Why that may seem a little bit uh, strange, uh, it's for a reason. So when I put this engine back together, I'm not chasing my tail. So I know I've got a, a baseline of where the valve clearances were. And so obviously when you, this is a valve from one. So when you clean the valve up and you lap it into the head or, or get it recut, whatever the story is, it's gonna move up in the head. So I know uh, for example, if it's got a 192 shim in it, uh, the valve's going to go further up. So I'll, I'll put a 190 or 188, 188 shim. So it just saves a lot of work down the track. So here's a little trick to get these cams out, because uh, it's not like on the other video where they just pop out all the time. I've got the motor at top dead centre. This has been removed. So I've cracked all the bolts loose and I've put them in a few threads so that nothing jumps out. And just give it a little tap. That's it. So that's it, they're ready to come out. Um, you'll notice too that these are marked. Um, exhaust one, two, three, four. And I've also got a curve here on the front for the spark plug hole. And the other useless information, this number here, J466, that corresponds to this number here that's stamped in the head. So in the machining process of these engine of these heads, the caps are screwed down to the head and they they run a linear bore. Like just pretend my screwdriver is a bore, it'll bore through through here, through all these caps and these journals. So that's why if you break one of these or lose one of these, the chances of you making one fit from another head uh, as slim to Buckley's. So yeah, don't lose your caps, all right? So I've done the valve clearance check. Um, I've just clean, cleaned the top of these buckets and I've wrote, written down on there E1, E1A, E1 E12, so I know which buckets go where. Um, I just use this little, it's a child magnetic dart and that works great. Put them aside. I'll check it all, all them later. That's it. Then I've got to remove the head. So you've got bolts in here. You two outside ones, just a 10 mil. These are a multi-hex eight. So you've got there. You've got to take that off. There's two bolts on there. I'll show them in a second. Um, yeah, this is a multi-hex socket, eight mil. Super cheap, 10 bucks, done. Here's a little trap for young players. So these two bolts here look the same when you pull them out. One down there. See under the head of the bolt? It's a lot thicker on the left hand one. So that's like a built in dowel that locates this gear train here. And there's also a dowel in there, so it's crucial you don't mix these two up. You can always put that skinny one in there, but you can't put the other one in there. Just under the gear train, these two bolts here. You've got to be so careful. This, especially this one is very shallow. There's not much meat to it. So I always degrease it and then prep sole it. Give, make sure it's nice and dry so no slippage. Because you get one chance, especially that one there. So many times I've had to drill these out and use quality sockets. So I've got the head off and I'm just looking at this, the state of these water jackets. So she was going to have some overheating issues, that's for sure. Look at that crud. Yep. 
good call, I think. The bore isn't too bad. Quick hone. New set of pistons. We'll see that come up. You can see the extent of just the corrosion on the engine here, all around this area here. I started to clean it, but I just thought, nah, it's too much. So I'll probably get this um, vapor blasted. That's it. All right. So I'm going to pop the side covers off now, uh, and then pop the sump off, and go from there. And as I, as I'm pulling stuff apart, they just live in their own little trays. That way, stuff that doesn't get lost. Uh, once the tray is empty, the job's done. I got bigger ones for the crankcases. All right. So I've got the uh, clutch cover off. I just wanted to show you something pretty cool. Um, so this has got a funny locking nut. I've already undone it. These are available from Excite Bikes and they fit perfect. So just so you know. Now while we're here, I just want to point something out. Uh, I've seen people do it time and time again and it just fascinates me. So when people um, want to change the clutch, so you your clutch plates in here, people tend to remove this basket here. They don't realise that if you look in here, it's driven by the crankshaft in turn it drives this gear here comes up through here and that drives the camshaft so what people do so I'll just I'll turn that you see how it all interlocks there's no markings on it there's no timing marks so people rip out the clutch and they decide to turn the motor over a few times for whatever reason then they go oh my bike won't start it won't turn over because that's because your valves are hitting the piston so don't remove that basket unless you know how to do valve timing. If you do have to remove it for whatever reason, bloody mark it. Simple. All right, this part can be a little bit tricky, so um, pay attention, take heaps of photos. Um, so I've popped all the bolts out, popped this cover off. You just keep pressure on that shaft when you pull the cover off. And you'll notice there's two dowels there. They get easily jammed. So in here is your shift drum and your gear lever assembly. So all this has got to come out. It just makes pulling um, uh, the bottom half much easier. You can get the gearbox parts out so much easier. So I'll pull it all out and have a look. So I've just removed the gear shaft. Just got to be careful. So that washer, you don't lose that washer. They normally get stuck to there. And you'll see that these two springs. So those two springs sit either side of this pin here. And also, just take care not to lose that. It's like a little dowel. Once that's off, I can remove these two bolts here. And this plate should come out along with that pawl thing. You'll see it in a sec. Alright, so I've got the sump removed. Um, like I said, this, this motor's had some water in it. I'm glad because there's a, a, a real nice sludge on the pickup. And uh, that wouldn't have uh, ended well if this motor ran for much longer. Um, so, yeah, just to take note, when you take the sump off, you've got to take the um, oil filter out. And these two O-rings, uh, it's crucial that you replace them to get a good seal. So make sure you're not losing um, oil into the oil pump and through the filter and whatnot. So next step is to remove the oil pump. So there's a feed line just down there. There's a bolt there, there's a little pipe goes into there, and there's a bolt there. Uh, and then I've got to remove another bolt there and that pump slides out. So the interesting is there's a sprocket that runs off the oil pump. Yeah, so how it works, uh, there's a sprocket off here, a chain, and runs the back of the clutch basket. When I put this motor back together, I'll show you how to line that up because it's crucial. I've seen someone take a clutch basket out, put it back in, not line up, and just jammed it. Um, he's lucky... It didn't seize his motor because, uh, well, frankly, couldn't start it because they had the valve timing out. But that would have been a huge disaster. So, yeah, let's go ahead and pull this oil pump out. All right, and with the oil pump out, just want you to pay attention to this. Um, this oil orifice. It's very crucial not to lose them. I like to keep the same orientation they come in. Um, I've had them different ways so I don't think it matters 
too much which way it goes, but I like to keep the way it came out. And I take all the dowels out and O-rings as they come along, so keep them all together. So I'll carefully take that out. Like I said before, all the parts from the go in this tray. So this tray is completely all to do with the oil pump. And you see here, I've got the dowel in there, I've got the O-ring sitting there. So when I come to replace them, it's just simple as swap them out. Off you go. Now with the oil pump out, you can see the benefit of it. Now I can get to these shift rods. Uh, I can get this out. And well, then happy days, and then we can start pulling the crankcase apart. Well, I'm just going to show you something. Lighting's a bit hard to get to, so I want to remove the the shifter rod there. So I've undone these plates. Hang on. Right here we go. So I want to take this rod out here. So I've undone these plates. You just got to move it that plate slightly out of the way. You can rattle that off. Sometimes I just like to leave it on. It's just easier. So, move my torch over here. So what I've done is I've taken the lock bolt out of here so that can slide in that shaft. If you look around here, there's the shaft hole there. So I'll just push that out and see how the shift rods start to drop. There's one there. This one here will drop. That one should drop. Yep. Right, last one. Right, they drop out. So in theory, this should slide out. There you go. Done. See so that plate's just hanging there. So I'll put that there. Now you can see the drums. That's why it's easy to take all this cover off. So, what I normally do, this is going to be tricky, I'll take these rods out and I'll slide them straight back on the shaft in the tray so I know I don't get them mixed up, if that makes sense. Alright. So, I've removed the bolts and what I normally do is I just mark them crankcase top bolts, crankcase bottom, external, I'll keep external and internal separate. Um, so, that's all these little bolts around here. Now, I was just going to show you here, it's very clear. So, it's got a little arrow. That indicates the bolts there have uh, washers, little copper washers, don't lose them. There's two here and two on the top. Alright, so I've got the bottom crankcase off. Just uh, pay attention to these dowels. There's one, two, three. Remove them and don't lose them. Now I can pull the gearbox train out, so this will lift straight up. Just pay attention, there's a metal locating clip. I'll just take that out there it is there that locates the bearing in there so it sits in there and it locates in there All right so I'll chuck that in there now also pay attention to this sprocket seal it's got a lip on it so you can't change the seal when the two halves are together so this is a good time to change the seal because it actually sits in the crankcase so yeah I'll remove that and then this gear train should come straight out that way uh, and then we'll talk about the crank and bearing marks and all that sort of stuff. So removing this is a bit of a punish. You need to slide that bearing out and then you've got to try to maneuver it on a steep angle out of that bearing in the housing now. So if I can put it back in, it goes back in easy. Oh, it's back too soon. But yeah, you get the drift, it's a punish. All right, that's stuck in there. Good job. All right, I've got this motor turned over. I just want to talk about codes a bit. Um, so you notice on the here, it's got B, C, C, B. So you've got one, two, three, four, five. Always think left, very left number is, say, from the left-hand side of the engine or cylinder one. So that, to me, from memory, is what size, what code size, when they bore this two crankshaft halves. And then on the crankshaft you'll see, so one, two, three, four, five. So that's the size of the crankshaft. So you'd go B3, C2, C2, to work out you you cap the bearing shell size. And see so you've only got four letters here. 
that tells me that's the for the conrod journal size on the crankshaft itself so i'll carefully turn this back over i don't want the crankshaft to fall out because that would be not a good thing uh, and then you see on the conrods b2 so from memory that is when they machine the conrods it's b2 so if i go with that theory b2 a from memory i'll look up the manual and post it up because uh this has been a while like i said all right that's it she's basically pulled apart pistons out happy days